Um, hello, hello everyone. This is Victor Zwagen360 and uh, today I'll be showing you how to make the snow effect uh, in Click Team Fusion 2.5. So, uh, yeah, in case you're wondering what these dots are for, uh, they're just for the uh, simplicity of thing where I'm placing my things. And you can disable the dots by going to the Show Grid button and clicking it. So yeah, I just like keep it enabled. So first, let's go to the library. If we go to local library, then games. Double click it. <laughs> go to backgrounds and uh, let's just choose a simple <laughs> background uh, like a landscape or something sure thing uh, <laughs> what's going on? Oh, there we go enlarge it just for the purposes of simplicity uh, leave it here <laughs> as always just test it <coughs> just run application so, yeah maybe slow it down a bit <laughs> by having it at speed 30. That should be kind of better. Yeah, that's probably better. Anyway, um, <laughs> so we want to make the effect of snow falling from random uh, places, like uh, from the top of the uh, screen obviously so first let's go and create a new active that's actually going to be the snow and edit the sprite and choose the circle choose the white color for the secondary color black one for the primary and clear everything and simply draw a little snowball Something like that. Let's uh, crop it. Make sure the hotspot and action spot are in the middle. Just in case. And click OK. So we have uh, our little snowball. Let's actually make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's perfect. And uh, now that we have it, we need to give it a, a, a movement of physics and <laughs> we give it a static movement. Now as I click it, you'll notice a message popping up saying that we need a physics engine, yeah. And that's what we are going to add now. <coughs> a simple physics engine here. Edit somewhere outside of the scene, and uh, what uh, we have now is basically <laughs> like something that tells us how uh, the snow will behave uh, uh, according to physics. So it will go down, or will the wind blow on it, or anything. And yeah, basically, uh, the snowdrop will fall as the scene loads because it just has static physics movement so by default it should fall down as we can see it falls down here and what we want to do is uh, make sure that it spawns at a random location so we need to add uh, the other object active that we are going to call mover so in this to mover and basically it's just gonna move uh, at random points uh, and that's where the snow is gonna fall from so uh, we're just gonna make an event in the event editor always 
so that the mover moves to the position in x coordinate and we're gonna say a random range which is gonna be here and uh, basically we need it from zero the very left of the screen to I think it's uh, 640 or 800 something let's click ok let's actually check it just in case yeah 480 my bad so it is 480 <coughs> oh wait uh, for, what am I saying 480 is actually uh, the y coordinate so it is 640 in the x coordinate yeah so I'm correct yeah ignore that <laughs> so it is 640 uh, uh, in uh, the x position so it will basically change its position between 0 and 640 so anyway between that position it will actually uh, locate itself now what we also need to do is add another event that every now and again so every uh, let's say every tenth of a second 10 divided by 100 is 1 tenth so yeah 1 tenth of a second uh, there's going to be a new object created and that object is going to be snow and he's going to be relative to the mover so wherever the mover is snow is going to be created and it's going to be exactly at the uh, middle of the mover let's just put it a bit down because the mover is uh, uh, slightly up above this thing or we could just move the mover <laughs> A bit down and leave it at zero zero but yeah <laughs> I moved it down so left X exactly at zero and Y direction it goes from zero at the top to whichever large number at the bottom I gave it 33 so it's 33 pixels down and I click OK and now what we do is we basically play the frame so yeah we can see that it's now snowing, but uh, obviously uh, it's not exactly falling at the right speed at which the snow would fall, because snow is actually quite light, it doesn't take that uh, little time to fall, it usually like hovers a bit like etc. So let's go to movement of the snow, I selected snow and went to movement tab and actually select the gravity scale and move it to something less like yeah 36 should be fine around uh, 30 to 40 should be fine so now it actually feels more like snow and uh, <coughs> if we go to event editor we should we can basically change a uh, the speed of uh, creation of the snow by changing this value every so the less uh, we make the value the more often the snow will appear because it will actually count uh, less ticks uh, before the next snow appears so yeah but for now let's leave it to the tenth of second now if you look again it actually uh, like feels like the snow and everything but it doesn't exactly uh, feel like it's melting you know so what I'm gonna do now is uh, make the snow have a value that determines ah stupid mobile <laughs> anyway uh, the value that basically uh, shows us uh, its lifetime in a way so basically uh, we're gonna make it uh, linked to transparency so yeah in fact the way the best way to do it is just make uh, 
snow lose transparency as it's falling down so that it's like kind of melting near the ground and uh, yeah it's going to feel more like snow so what we're going to do is create a new condition and make another every let's say every hundredth of a second or three hundredth of a second something like that every three hundredth of a second uh, yeah that's fine the snow uh, effect alpha blending coefficient that's the one that is responsible for its transparency zero uh, means uh, it's not transparent it's fully visible 255 it's fully transparent and fully invisible so we're going to set it to the current alpha blending coefficient and plus one so we're going to slowly increase uh, the transparency of the snow and also we're going to give it a value so if I click on snow we're going to give it an alterable value which we're going to call runs Transparency value. And now, every 300th of a second is going to update the transparency value. Or, in fact, let's just put it to always, to be sure. The transparency value is going to be set. Choose transparency value here. Is going to be set to the snows. Alpha blending coefficient. And so the next condition that we're going to make, not to fill up our memory too much with all the snow objects created at once, we have to destroy them once they become invisible. So once this value that shows us uh, alpha blending coefficient, compare it to transparency value, compare it to greater or equal than 254 okay then what we do with the snow is we destroy it simple as let's check it out as you can see they're slowly losing their uh, uh, transparency so yeah they're slowly becoming less and less visible but uh, if we want them to completely melt by the time they land near the ground then we can either decrease the amount of time it takes them to actually uh, increase their transparency or increase the amount by which transparency increases so if we go to edit here and instead of one we can make it three times faster uh, hello? <laughs> yeah, like sometimes it glitches out. Okay, so now I put 3 instead of 1. It should be 3 times as fast. Now it actually melts and gets destroyed. You can see it's roughly at about 28, 29 objects at the same time. So it doesn't actually get overloaded in the memory because they get destroyed as soon as they become fully transparent. And it actually looks like real snow. So yeah, what you can do uh, further on is like like uh, special things like uh, for each uh, uh, snowflake that you have, you can move it uh, from side to side uh, now and again. Like put the wind, uh, apply uh, the little uh, force onto it and stuff like that. So. For example, I want to always uh, apply the force physics, apply the force onto the piece of snow, onto a certain amount, but yeah, 
obviously I don't want to have any wind at the moment I just want to have uh, normal snow so in case you want to do that you can actually use uh, different physics uh, options to simulate the wind to simulate the uh, wetness of the snow etc and uh, it will actually show up uh, in the runtime so it's really useful too Anyway, that was just a quick demo of how you can create a simple and effective snow. Uh, just four events, as you can see. I just explained them in a bit too depth, too, uh, too much depth, and uh, yeah, I uh, just did it on the go. So there are several ways you can toggle the uh, options as well. Like for example, if you don't want to keep changing the uh, set of blending coefficient. Uh, uh, rate of change you can just go to edit and delete that bit for now temporarily so it's gonna set to itself instead of plus three we're gonna add the global value this is gonna be called something like rate of melting and then we can actually add it again and uh, add this global value that's actually going to be rate of melting so and then you can set it to I don't know like 7 to make it melt really fast so they hardly even appear or if you wanna set it to 2 so that they melt really slowly that's obviously gonna increase their lifetime and stuff, but they're still gonna melt uh, near the end of the journey <laughs> at the bottom. But yeah, that's the way you can actually manipulate the snow. There are loads of ways to uh, make different other effects. This is just the most basic one I use. And uh, yeah, hope you found it helpful. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time. Victor's Dragon 360 out.